Hey, Katrina here from Scrappy Horses. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Let me preface this video by saying that normally I don't jump the shark. At least I don't feel like I jump the shark in my videos. But today I'm jumping the shark. I'm going off the deep end here and I'm going to show you something that I did on a project that the majority of people are never going to do and probably don't want to do, but I wanted to share it just to give you some ideas of some things you can do in Cricut Design Space that you may not have thought about. This crazy project was inspired by the challenge over at Paper a la Mode, where the theme is seriously art inspired. The idea is to choose an art form, an art genre, or a particular artist and be inspired by that. Well, I went kind of full, full out on this and went and found an artist, researched him, and then instead of making a project that was really inspired by him, I sort of wanted to get in his brain. I wanted to actually try to draw what he drew. I wanted to recreate one of his creations. And I don't draw and I don't paint. So this was going to be a big challenge. I had to find a way to make it work. So I started thinking, okay, what are my strengths that I can draw on to recreate this? And my creative strengths are in Cricut Design Space. Not that they're that strong, but they're the strongest of what I have. So I thought, okay, how can I make this happen in Cricut Design Space? And I've done this before on smaller projects, but I decided let's go all out and let's figure out if I can really do this. So let me show you where I started. I found this piece this kitty now this is mine that i did but i found something similar to this that i wanted to copy and i came up with this then as i went through and i started really looking for pieces by louis wayne the artist that i chose i couldn't find any documentation that this piece really is his so i found this Again, this one is mine that I recreated and I decided, okay, let's see if, you know, what I can do with this one now. All right, so let me just take you to square one and let's take a look at how I did this. First off, I'm going to take some things off the screen, but I want to show you why they're on the screen. They're on the screen. These leaves are all here because of this kitty and the pumpkin. And at the end of this time that we're going to spend in Cricut Design Space, I'm going to put this layout together for you. So if you want to see this layout in particular, that's at the end of the video. And we actually, I'll take you to the craft table and we'll put this together. All right, so let's take this back away. And that's why the leaves are here. And these leaves, these various leaves, are from Close to My Heart Flower Market and Close to My Heart Artiste, all right? So let's just get rid of this. We're gonna just put them all together here. We're gonna group them and we're gonna hide them so they're not in our way. We have this piece right here, which you can barely see. So what I have done is I've darkened out all the parts in dark colors. Okay, stay with me for a minute because you're thinking, what parts? I'll, I'll get there. Hang with me for just a second. Oh, and let me also say, this is not going to be easy for me to actually teach you how to do this. I'm basically just showing you what I did. And as I get better at it myself, I might be able to help a little more. But right now, I just kind of want to show you something. I want to open up your eyes to something you can do in Cricut Design Space. Okay, that's kind of my thinking on this video. All right, so back to the actual project. 
you really can barely see it. Let me get the screen big. You can barely see this, but see, if you can, this is actually this. This is just so light in color that you can barely see it. Here's the little green leaf, green leaf, green leaf, blue floral pieces. Everything is just so toned down, you can barely see it. And here are the actual pieces. All right, I started with this one, this kitty right here. And the kitty was pulled in from Animal Kingdom. The pumpkin is from Close to My Heart Artistry. And I just started piecing the pieces together. All right, so here we go. Let's do it. We're actually gonna just take him apart and see what I did. So let's unflatten. Here's the pumpkin. And we're pulling in the pumpkin from Close to My Heart Artistry. So I'm just gonna type in pumpkin up here. There it is, we're pulling it in. Add to canvas. So there it is right there. All right, now we're gonna pull in this kitty. And instead of going in there, I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this. So command copy, command V. There's kitty head. All right, and then we have kitty tail. All right, so let's see if we can find kitty tail. All right, so here's where we found the cat. The cat is close to my heart art booking. All right, so we have the pumpkin, we have the kitty head, and we have this. All right, let's see how I got this, because this is a little crazy, isn't it? All right, first thing I did is I brought in shapes I brought in an oval. I took the oval and I cut out the top of this pumpkin. First of all, we don't need the second layer of the pumpkin, so we're just gonna get rid of that. Now we're gonna take the oval and we're going to slice. Take this away, take this away. Now you see where we got this piece from. We're gonna go ahead, I just flipped it, tipped it, and there it is. I'm gonna turn it white, just so you know that that is that piece right there. Okay, now I've got my kitty, and I've got this. I'm gonna bring this in just a little bit. I've got kitty head. Kitty head's gonna come about this size. Now kitty needs a body. So all I did is I just brought in another shape. I brought in, you can bring in any shape. A circle will work because we can turn it into whatever we need. I'm gonna pull it across like so. Pull it down. Again, make it the width of my pumpkin. Bring my head on top. So I'm bringing head to the front. I'm bringing pumpkin to the front. Now, basically, I have this shape right here. Now, he's got little arms sticking over. So I pulled in shapes. I pulled in these teardrops right here. He has two arms, so I am going to right click. I'm going to duplicate. Now I have two teardrops. I'm gonna change that shape a little bit. Move it over. And basically, I'm, I just played with it. I thought, okay, how's how would his little arm lay in here? Okay, how's it gonna look? And I kept referring back to the actual photo, which is right here. I just kept referring back to this photo right here and then pulling in the little arms and the little 
face facial features and such. And so you can distort this as much as you want. You can change it, get it the size you want, the size you want, the shape you want. And there we go. All right, so now I have all of these pieces in. Let's change that to white. Let's change this to white for now. Move this back to the front. Next, the tail. All right, all I did is I brought in a big circle and I again found a size that would work. And I sliced away. Now all I need to do is slice away the rest of this orange so I can pull in any sort of shape. Select the two, slice it away, and now I've got my tail. Again, I'm just gonna bring it around here. Attach it in. And there it is. Now, what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to make this a very, very light color like I did here. I put a blue outline on it because I knew, let me pull this back one more time. Um, I knew I wanted to put him on a blue background. So I did blue around him. I wouldn't have necessarily needed to do that. I did a lot with my Copics anyway. So let's just do him in white this time. So this, I know that his body it's going to be all different colors. So I came in and chose a very, very light color for his head, his body. There we go. I just chose it over here. It was easier. Let's put it in that same really light color. Let's put his little paws in that really, really light color. Let's get his tail in that super light color. And you know what, let's move it to the back. There we go. All right, so now everything here is in that very light color. I know I want this pumpkin to be orange. So I'm gonna move that to a super light yellowy color that just barely shows I can choose this, go to advanced, and then just keep moving it over till it gets really light. Or I can leave it even a little darker if I want to move it around wherever I want to move it. I can also slide this to change my color. Okay. So we'll just kind of bring it in here because I know it's going to be pretty dark orange, so I can leave it a little darker. Okay, now I know that I need eyes on him. Let's make this darker again, just so we can figure out where the eyes are gonna go. Again, I just chose those little teardrops. Go back to shapes, grab those teardrops. I'm gonna turn it this way. Gonna make it a little more narrow. Gonna bring it in, bring it in, get it down to the size and shape I like. I'm gonna turn it white. And again, I'm just gonna play with one eye at a time here, because once I get this in, then all I have to do is duplicate it. So I right click, I duplicate, I flip it horizontally, I grab it, pull it down, and now I have my second eye. All right, now we have this little piece. Again, go to shapes, 
I just chose a triangle. You can also change your width up here. by making it smaller and longer, whichever you need. Change it to white so we can see it. Bring it in, it's way too big still. So we'll lock it up and just make smaller. You can also come bigger down here and then you can also grab it and make it smaller here. Now, he had part of his head cut off here. That's only because I had already cut him from for this one. And then, but he would have his whole face here, okay? So just pretend like he does for a minute, all right? Because I just stole him from here instead of bringing in a new cat head. That's the reason his, his head is partially gone here. All right, so we're gonna change this back to that color that isn't quite white. His eyes are going to leave him white. This is all left white. We're going to now take this. We are going to select all of it and say flatten. And now there it is. See how he's just like this? Now I can, if I like, offset him. Take it down to a very small offset. I'm using the arrows on my keyboard to do that. Apply. And you can see now what we've done. I can select the whole thing now and make it smaller. And then I just put them on a square piece of paper or a square shape. So let's just bring in a square. Stick him back here, move it to the back, and there he is. All I have to do now is change this to white. I'll change my black offset to a light blue here. Select it all, flatten, and I have my page ready to color. That's all there was to it. For this guy, I just did basically the same thing. The big difference here is I brought in this piece from close to my heart, okay, for his eyes. Let's bring back this so you can see this. I brought in this floral piece right here from close to my heart. Okay, now I can show you back and forth. This is from close to my heart. This would be representing this. The little shape circles here are just from shapes. This leaf is one leaf. I just simply took it apart and move the shapes around. Okay, so you can see how this would be this part right here. This would have gone right here. I just sliced them off and put them where I needed to replicate. Then I put in the circles and I went ahead and left these dark black because I knew they were going to be black. See how it's black right here? Okay, so here's the flower. Here's the orange circle right here, and then the black center of the eyes. I did actually draw in this nose piece, the little dots, the whiskers, and I figured out the chin line from right here. Okay, I'm looking to see, oh, right here. Just right here, I could see the chin line. Okay, so this gives you an idea of how I sort of put these together. And with no very little drawing skills, I could end up with this from this. 
I could take this and just with my Copic coloring skills, I could create this. I know this was not the best teaching video, but that was not really my goal. My goal was more just to show you how I came up with it and to give you some ideas of things you can do with Cricut Design Space that you may not have thought about before. As always, if you have questions about this, I will do my best to answer them, but I'm not guaranteeing anything on this one because I really did kind of have to feel my way around on it myself. But I just wanted to share what I was doing more than anything else. Let's go on, let's head to the craft table. Let's take a look at how I did put the layout together in my art journal. Um, I'm not gonna do any coloring for you. That I leave to the real colorists out there. I don't, I, that's not my real thing. But let's go to the craft table and I'll show you how I did put it together. All right, I'll see you at the craft table. We have made it to the craft table. Let's take a look at what I used. I have some gold metallic paint and a piece of photo paper that I had already washed with some blue ink and then just put the gold paint over the top. And these are the colors I basically used. Just three different shades of blue on some photo paper. Okay, next we have a sponge. I've got some matte gel. I've got that gold paint again. I have some double score tape. I have a, an ice cream lid. Yes, an ice cream lid. A bottle of water, spray bottle of water. A little piece I colored. And here are all of my little leaves that I cut. And a scrap piece of paper from another project I did. All right, let's get started with the leaves. I'm gonna go ahead and take my ink and I'm just laying it down into the ice cream lid, just different colors around. I'm gonna go ahead and use my spray bottle and spray that and dip my leaves in different places. And you can see there that I'm coming up with a variety of leaves for my projects and they'll all be a little bit different, different colors. I cleaned out my lid. Now I'm going to go through the same process again, but I'm using some different colors. Again, I try not to get my ink pads in where I've already put the ink. Occasionally I do. It doesn't ruin your ink pad, or at least it hasn't ruined mine. Let, let me say it that way. It hasn't ruined mine. So I can't guarantee, you know, what will happen to anyone else's, but mine are fine. All right, here's that scrap piece of paper. All right, I'm laying it in to sort of frame it because I thought that would be sort of an interesting look. I'm gonna use a little bit of um, masking tape because it'll stick, but it, I mean, it won't pull any of the paper off, especially when I put it over my arm like that, my hand. And now I've got it exactly to the size I want it. I'm gonna pull off that tape that I have. I took it over to my paper slicer and just sliced it. So that was really easy to do. Now I'm gonna come in with a little bit of blue ink and I'm just gonna ink around the edges and that will take care of that piece. Now I just come in with a little bit of fabric tack and go ahead and glue that little piece right into place. Once I have that glued into place, then I'm gonna go ahead and start gluing all of my pieces into my book. First though, I wanna show you how I got those little gold marks. I just used a fan brush and just laid it around. So in case you're wondering how I got that, that's how it happened. Next, it's just a matter of putting everything into my little art journal. I put in my focal image. I am sort of grounding it with a strip of paper. I put a strip of paper at the top with a little bit of paw print ribbon underneath. And I'm finishing that off now with all of those little leaves that I cut. Anything that I didn't especially love, I can just lay a leaf over and sort of, sort of cover things up. And if you remember the art piece that I was trying to copy, it had little leaves floating all over the kitty, so it worked out fine. 
All right, here's a couple of last look images of the pieces that I was copying. Hey, if you hung in on this video this long, you deserve kudos. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate your time. Comments or questions, leave them below, and I will get back with you the best I can on this one. You have a great week, and I'll catch up with you in the next video, which I'm sure will be much more me. All right, have a good one. Bye.